Hi, welcome to the first lesson on energetics and thermochemistry 5.1 measuring energy changes. These here are the objectives for the lesson. Temperature, the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Uh, so if I draw a molecule here and make that vibrating uh, and say this one's vibrating slightly less and this one's vibrating slightly more, the temperature will be uh, what the average of that is. The heat is the amount of energy in a substance. So I could have something that's quite small, that's quite hot, such as a flame, uh, but it would still have less heat than something that was quite cold because there is just a lot more particles. So if you add all these particles up, it'll add up to more heat energy than what uh, this hot temperature flame is. All right, definitions you need to know. Enthalpy is the amount of energy or heat content of a substance. The energy is stored in chemical bonds. It includes kinetic and potential energies. And it's not measured directly, but changes are measured. So we're only measuring changes. Uh, that's why we have delta H, which is change. All right, standard enthalpy of a reaction. You need to know the conditions as well when you give it. So if you're measuring the standard enthalpy, uh, don't forget to have a little zero there. And of course, it's 298 uh, Kelvin, and it's uh, 100,000 uh, Pascals. So that is five zeros there. But the change in enthalpy, what we'll be doing uh, to measure the change in enthalpy is uh, reactants go to products. Uh, so what we'll always be doing is taking the products and minusing it from the reactants. So you need to remember that. That will change uh, as we do other types of enthalpy. Uh, so if you find that uh, when you have a reaction here, let's say, and what we have is the energy of here is a lot less or a lot greater, I should say, for exothermic than this one here. So this one here is quite high, it's reactants and that's quite low. Uh, when you get the products minus reactants, that will be a low value minus a high value. So delta H will be negative. You need to remember that. Uh, so it's the opposite for endothermic reactions uh, and it'll be positive. Here we have an enthalpy level diagram which you need to be able to write. So I'll just draw that same uh, reaction there because it's simple over here and that bond there needs to be broken so you can see uh, that there is always this activation energy here that's needed all right and then we will have uh, this reaction here form so for an endothermic reaction that bond was quite had quite a lot of energy in it um, and so it took this much energy to break it and then uh, when it formed uh, the products had uh, a lot of energy stored in them so that's how it got even more energy stored in it that's quite unstable so that energy can be released uh, so let's just take it down to another reaction here and just do the opposite perhaps uh, if we take this it's got a lot of energy uh, we take a little bit of energy here to break it and then it will form a much more stable product that has much less energy stored in it. And that, that will then have a more stable bond down here. Okay, so for this one here, uh, you can see the uh, reactants and the products, and the reactants and the products. Uh, delta H equals products minus reactants. Uh, you can see here that the energy stored uh, here in the products, so that's been an increase here, uh, and so delta H is positive there. Uh, with this one here, the energy loss has been here, uh, and so for exothermic. Uh, delta H is negative because you've lost this amount of energy in the bonds that have been stored. 
If you are given examples of reactions that are combining with oxygen, or if you're given reactions that are an acid plus a base, may you be aware that the surrounding temperature will increase, so that's regarded as exothermic. All right. Uh, as we said before, they have less energy stored in their bonds, which makes them more stable. Uh, and so they have stronger bonds, so they're actually harder to break. So the, the bond enthalpy uh, of which we'll learn in a second, next lesson or so, uh, it's actually harder to break them. Moving on to the calculations now, we use this Q here to represent the energy. Uh, M is the mass in grams, C is the specific heat of water, and delta T is the change in temperature. So uh, just remembering, because we're doing uh, usually delta H, and sometimes we forget to write the little zero there, it's per mole. So we need to work out how many moles has occurred in the reaction divided by N if we're using the standard enthalpy. Just also remember, for most ways, the most common way to actually do these calculations is to see how well the energy heats up water. So there's always an assumption that uh, if you've got a centimeter cubed of water, then the mass is just one gram. Okay, here is uh, the, a simple way that we can do it, the normal way that we do it. Uh, the calorimeter, we try and stop heat loss by using insulating materials such as cork or styrofoam. And this stirring here keeps the temperature even, and this is where we measure the temperature change of the reaction occurring inside this container. If you want to do a little bit better than that, uh, there's something called a bomb calorimeter. Uh, it is contained in steel, and then we just use electrodes to blow something up in here. Uh, it's a little bit better, it's got a motorized stirrer, um, and so there's less energy uh, being put into here, such as with a flame, because you're using electrons to ignite the substance. It's very important that you have an idea of the errors. The most important error will be with uh, the heat lost or gained. Now the heat can be gained because of this, uh, you're heating it up in some way to make the reaction work. Uh, there could be a loss of gas, which will be a loss of energy in some form or other, but in most cases, uh, the, the change in temperature is less than what's needed because the substance is getting heated up, the surroundings is getting heated up, the calorimeter itself is getting heated up. So you're losing energy that way. Uh, another thing to think about is the precision. How accurately can you determine the temperature with the instrument that you have? When you do these experiments in class, you will find that your graph will look very similar to this and will have a curve. The reason because of that is because as soon as you add it here, uh, it is constantly cooling. Now in class I found uh, at about 100 degrees Celsius the cooling curve of water actually looks like this. Alright, so when it's at a really high temperature it actually cools really really fast and then as it gets closer to room temperature it cools slower. So that's an important thing to remember. How do we account for this slowing? Uh, we need to draw a line of best fit along here and then we need to work out when we added the the substances together and then we need to go from here and draw a straight line across here and that there is the actual uh, increase in temperature. It dropped down this far because it cooled from the room uh, during this time before the reaction was complete. So you need to be able to be aware of all those lines and how those lines uh, here are used to calculate what the true temperature rise actually is. Uh, 1,200 kilojoules of heat is evolved when two moles of magnesium react completely with one mole of oxygen. How much energy is released if 0.6 grams of magnesium is burnt? As always, start with writing your balanced equation. Uh, make sure uh, you've got state symbols as well. Then we need to work out what the heat of combustion of magnesium is. So we need to divide it by the number of moles, which is two. So we get a negative value because it's exothermic, it's combustion, uh, minus 600 kilojoules per mole. We then work out um, how many moles was actually used, 
which is 0.6 divided by molar mass, so we get 0.0247 moles. So to work out uh, the actual energy released, uh, we're using this formula here, delta H equals Q on N, so if we rearrange that, the energy is the enthalpy of combustion, which is per mole times the number of moles, and that works out to 40.8 kilojoules of energy. Lastly, problem two, uh, 20 centimeters cubed of 2 molar sodium hydroxide is added to 30 centimeters cubed of HCl of the same concentration. The temperature increases by 12 degrees to determine the heat released. So uh, always start with your balanced chemical equation. And so that is uh, balanced already when, as it's written. Please note this. So you can see that it's 1 is to 1 mole. All right, that'll be relevant in a second. Uh, assume because you've uh, you've added 20 to 30, so you've got 50 mils in total. Uh, so that gives you the mass of 50 grams. Uh, then you can then write your equation, Q is MC delta T. You've got the M, 50. You've got the C as always, 4.18, which is in your data booklet. Uh, and you've got change in temperature, which is given in the question, which is 12, uh, which is actually should be 12 Kelvin. Uh, but change in temperature uh, will be the same if it's in Kelvin or degrees Celsius. Uh, that gives you the 2.51 kilojoules value. Uh, the, you then need to know how many moles, so high sodium hydroxide is a limiting factor. That works out to 0.04 moles, so delta H equals Q on N, divide 2.51 by 0 0.04, and you get 62.1 kilojoules. So this exothermic reaction for sodium hydroxide is negative 62.7 kilojoules per mole.